Alrighty. So, uh, what are we doing today? Well, okay. Um, what we're doing today is we're doing a test on the cooling system for our new charger design. Now, this charger, um, when it's finished, hopefully, uh, is going to be a significant increase in power over the current charger that I have fitted to the car. Um, I'm expecting to get at least 10 kilo watts out of this thing and um, hopefully get about 60 to 70 amp charges going into the traction battery. Um, more if I can. And um, so it's basically a uh, improved version of the book converter charger. And um, so to start off with, uh, we have a heatsink in here, which is actually, strictly speaking, a, a chill plate. Uh, it's got two quarter inch NPT holes holes um, threaded holes hookups here one there and one there and on the block itself which is about a half inch alu 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 aluminium block um, we have a three phase 1200 volt um, 100 amp uh, bridge uh, coming off copper bus bars on the um, DC side it goes straight to a 1200 volt 200 amp IGBT block and uh, that block is configured uh, to be both the switch and the freewheeling diode for the book converter stage and in the center here let's see we got these two inductors um, that have been blobbed um, onto the heat sink here with this thermally conductive epoxy compound and they're also clamped uh, through, the, through the center by this um, piece of flat bar and threaded, uh, threaded um, I think it's 5 mil bar going down into the heatsink. So we're, the two of these are effectively thermally coupled uh, to the heatsink and um, then we finally have a diode block here which is the output diode and I think off the top of my head that's a 100 amp diode it's 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 actually two of them but uh, I'll just be availing of a single diode in that particular block and um, so obviously uh, because of the power um, that we're going to be handling here uh, the concern is heat uh, when the power factor correction stage is fitted to this um, I could probably expect there to be probably expect there to be something in the region of a kilo of, of heat uh, when the charger is functioning at high power now the problem is that with a traditional finned um, air air driven heatsink that that has a fan on it um, you've got to have quite a big heatsink and you have to have a big airflow through it uh, to keep the thermal gradient um, uh, as small as possible now this is where liquid cooling comes in because I can pump a lot of fluid through this heatsink block and uh, the specific heat capacity of glycol and water is uh, 
I'd say it's it's several orders of of mag of magnitude greater than air. So that's why I have decided to go for um, liquid cooling on this particular charger. And what I've done today is I've just I've just fitted um, excuse me <coughs> I've just fitted the header tank. Um, the pump and the actual chill plate block inside the casing and I've basically just hooked up the external radiator here just uh, so I can fill it up and essentially give it a test over a period of days to ins ensure that the uh, glycol doesn't eat any of the seals or it doesn't have a leak here in the block because some of the holes that I had to drill, I think this hole here and the two holes for the clamp bolts in there um, actually drilled into the cooling passages of the um, heatsink. So I put sealing compound on the, the, the bolts and I'm just uh, I was just concerned that there could be a bit of seepage or something from them. So uh, the purpose of the test today is just to actually uh, just fill up the system and get it functioning, and uh, just check that it doesn't have any uh, seepage or leaks or anything of the sort. So the pump here. Uh, it was something I took a bit of a chance on. It's a eBay Hong Kong um, purchase. It's a 12 volt pump, um, and uh, I think it was specified to have a five uh, meter head on it. It's about 25 quid, and um, I've just basically hooked that up to the header tank and uh, so the coolant comes out of the bottom of the header tank into the, the pump out of the pump then it comes into the chill plate here goes through the chill plate out through this uh, to this hose set up here underneath it comes down and it goes into the bottom of the radiator where it will be cooled it comes out of that and then goes back up to the to the header tank. So I gotta say I've been quite impressed by that little pump. Um, so I'm just gonna hook it up to a little 12 volt battery here, and uh, we'll see we'll see what 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 happens. Now I got coolant spraying out here. I don't know if you can see in there too well, but there is one hell of a flow going on in there. There is one serious flow happening in there, folks. Now I'm just going to take a rag and just put it over the top of the header tank. I don't want the splashes to kind of fool me into thinking there was something bad happening inside here. Now it's a bit more noisy than my um, Bosch pump that I have on the controller but uh, so far so good and when these 220 mil um, mains powered fans kick on uh, I think we'll get some pretty good cooling happening. That's a very high flow and uh, so yeah, this is just a little intro to the new charger, quick demo of the cooling system, and um, I'll do some more updates as uh, as as progress happens. Okay, that's it for now.